Hi, folks. Chris Foss here from thechrisfossshow.com. Welcome to the podcast. We certainly appreciate you today. It is August 12th, Monday of 2019. Holy crap, Monday? I don't know why. I woke up this morning. I was thinking it was Tuesday. <laughs> this is going to be a great Monday. Oh, my God. Uh, it's never a good sign when you're you're trying to just skip Monday. You're just like, I'm skipping it. I'm not even going to count it. I'm just going to pretend like it never happened. I'm just going to move on and just do something else other than Monday. Like today I was like, must be Tuesday. I'm pretty sure it's Tuesday. Um, just going to behave like it's Tuesday. Um, I don't know why I think that. I don't know why I woke up that way, but I don't know. feels pretty good to me so far. Uh, I guess I'll find out when I answer all the calls and emails and stuff. Um, anyway, uh, let's get into news and events and tech stuff uh, that's happening in our world. I would say your world, but I'm sharing it with you. If you don't mind, you don't mind we share. Can we share your world a little bit? Let's all hug and all that shit. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's share our world. Let's get together. Let's just have a group hug right now. Everyone, wherever you're at. Now, if you're in your car, don't take your hands off the steering wheel. Just hug the steering wheel, if you will. That That's probably safe. Uh, <laughs> let me check with the attorneys to see if it's okay to say that. Anyway, um... Let's talk about what's going on in the news today. Some interesting stuff that's really popped up in the news, and I'm kind of interested in where this goes. This this just sparks a lot of my imagination. WordPress.com owner Automatic, if you're familiar with the company Automatic, uh, they take and um, own control, built up WordPress.com and WordPress as we know it. The, uh, I forget the gentleman's name who's over there, but uh, I believe it's Mike something or something or other. Uh, Matt, I think it's Matt Gutenberg. Let me see if I can find the name. Mr. Mullenweg. Oops. I was close, wasn't I? Gutenberg. Maybe I think of Zuckerberg. Yeah, I'm mixing Mullenweg with Zuckerberg. What can I say, man? Give me a break. Um, I'm getting old. Mine starts going right there. Uh, anyway, uh, he is, uh, they are buying Tumblr. Tumblr. Yes. Remember Tumblr? Now, if you remember MySpace, you should remember Tumblr. Uh, they're buying Tumblr for an undisclosed amount. It's going to be kind of interesting what the amount's going to be, considering what's her face bought it for a billion at Yahoo or two billion. Uh, I don't remember. It seems like Yahoo bought it for two billion, and then Verizon bought it for a billion, and now they're offloading it. So anyway, um, they uh, are just buying it for an undisclosed sum from Verizon who bought it from Yahoo and uh, looks like they're going to take on 200 staffers that work at the company. So that's good. Those people aren't getting laid off. We like that. And um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with it. I'm kind of curious it, from their initial uh, positions of saying, um, uh, you know, um, we're buying it. Uh, they're saying they're not going to touch it. They're just going to leave it alone. It's still going to be fun. It's still going to have the porn ban, which is good because, holy crap, I got on there after a few years after Yahoo bought it, and it was like straight porn, and it was not like the good kind of porn, um, and it wasn't the type of porn that you want to have your kids getting on, and I was just like, wow, Tumblr is really big with the kids. This is scary. There was kind of the point where Tumblr was getting really popular with the kids, as the anti-Facebook uh, sort of trend. And then I think Snapchat came on along and ate their lunch because uh, Yahoo dropped the ball on carrying it, which Yahoo, I mean, that's just what Yahoo does, drop the ball. Um, and it uh, looks like Pinterest, Instagram have been growing. Facebook has not quite, has been losing a uh, percentage of U.S. Uh, social media users with an account. Uh, so it's going to be kind of interesting. Like, I'm, I've been trying to imagine what they would do with it. Like, what what do you think they would do with it? Uh, message me on Twitter or Facebook or something and let me know what you think, or LinkedIn, uh, what you think they might be um, doing with it. Like, maybe they could have some WordPress sort of integration or maybe they could make it so that my Tumblr can be integrated in my WordPress somehow. And then it could have like ultra share possibilities. I mean, I can only, oh, I can share through Tumblr now using uh, different apps like Hootsuite. 
um, or not, is it Hootsuite that I can share? Oh, it's YouTube that I share through Tumblr on. It has, it has a thing where you can share your video when you upload it to Tumblr. Uh, I think that's about the only thing I use it for when it comes to Tumblr is uploading that thing. That or if I've got promotions for clients or, um, uh, you know, some hashtagging that I want to take in uh, trend and stuff like that. I'll use Tumblr um, as just an added place to just flood the system, if you will, of, of um, eyeballs for my clients. Um, but uh, this is going to be interesting. They've got a strong mobile interface, it says here in Dashboard, where users follow their blogs. Um, then maybe they'll make it so that you can kind of have your blog on Tumblr and then you know, maybe more people read your blog because it's on Tumblr as opposed to the other, you know, maybe it'll make it so that it's best of both worlds. You know, you don't have to put your blog on Tumblr, but, you know, you can use Tumblr as a, as a distribution point uh, and make it more, made WordPress more Tumblr friendly. So this will be kind of interesting. I'm excited to see what it thinks. Go ahead and write me on uh, Chris Voss on Twitter. That's Chris Voss, one word, or Chris Voss on LinkedIn, or Chris Voss on Facebook. You can find me on other things. Tell me what you think. I'm kind of curious. I'm really interested to see what they might do with this. Um, it's pretty it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I'm kind of curious. I'm, I'm interested to see. Maybe there's a new social media uh, platform that can rise up and take on Facebook or something. I don't know. Um, WordPress has certainly done a good job of building their community over the last uh, billion years. I love WordPress. I use it on all my sites. So there you go. Uh, next up in the news, this is kind of interesting. Uh, this is from the New York Times, how YouTube radicalized Brazil, diverting users to conspiracy and far-right channels, elevating bull Sonaro's party, which I believe is their leader, and possibly creating public health crisis. Um, you know, Wow. I mean, I came onto Twitter. Uh, I was one of the early users of Twitter um, back in 2008. Uh, at one point, there was a whole group of us that were kind of playing customer service because Twitter's system was so jacked up and, you know, it was just randomly suspending people for anything and sometimes just spending for nothing. Um, their, their systems were just a muck mess. And back then, they had like 40 employees. And,. That no matter how fast the system was scaling and growing, they were just so intent at keeping it 40 employees. It was really one of the first fails of the clown car that Twitter is um, and their management. Um, the, the fact that they're all billionaires over there is just a joke because, I mean, it is the clown car that crashed into uh, success uh, no matter how much they tried to fail that thing um, and destroy it, especially with their infighting over management. But... Um, YouTube radicalized Brazil. So anyway, getting back to the Twitter story, because I know you're like, well, this is YouTube they're talking about, Chris. So anyway, in the early days of Twitter and social media, it was a wild west, and no one knew where it was going, but everyone had these high hopes, these imaginary sort of dreams that like, this will make the world one, and everyone will come together. And, and yeah, it's achieved a lot of those dreams. It's made people a lot more... Um, one around the world, if you will. It's helped overthrow regime governments by exposing them and everything else. But uh, 10 years in, or a little more over the, 10 years in, we're really starting to see the dark side of it. And of course, we started seeing that in 2015, 2016 um, with the uh, maybe before that, you can say, because certainly um, Trump started the birther lie and the conspiracy bullshit before then. So it might be before then, you can say. But we really saw, let's just say we really saw started seeing its uh, the dark side's um, results, if you will, of them being able to put whatever sort of crazy shit they want on uh, social media. And the... the, um, the uh, What's the word I'm looking for? The amount of payback that we have to pay for what how out of hand it got. You know, recently this year we saw the results of all the anti-vaxxer conspiracies making measles uh, become a new outbreak and exposing so many people to it, exposing people to m m measles that wouldn't have been exposed to it. And if you're familiar with measles, uh, it can create a lifetime of, of disease and issues um, once it does its first damage in your body. So... Uh, pretty crazy there, uh, and it'll be interesting to see if if uh, how we react to that. But certainly, uh, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all these social media places help radicalize a lot of things. The crazy conspiracy theorists, uh, uh, you know, you saw Alex Jones, who you know everything in their dog is a fucking a conspiracy. That guy wakes up, takes a breath in the morning, and 
thinks the Illuminati caused him to breathe. Um, probably blames his heart pumping on, I don't know, gay frog pills or whatever that bullshit is he puts out. I don't know. It's just stupid. Um, you know, there's, there's a point where uh, as a user you have to go, is this really entertainment value or is this kind of destructive when it comes down to it? Um, you probably don't want to apply that to any of my Facebook posts. <laughs> Oopsie. Uh, Chris, hypocrite. No, I'm not. Uh, anyway, so this is kind of interesting how YouTube radicalized Brazil, diverting users to conspiracy far right channels. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing it used to be back in the day that newspapers could be used to whip up voters and, and to, you know, have things happen. There were, there were sadly people that were lynched, you know, over, over newspapers in the South that would, that would post, uh, you know, scurrilous stuff and, you know, and they would ramp up the mob and, and all the sorts of good stuff. Now we're seeing the digital version of that. The only problem is we're seeing because it's, um, because it's uh, uh, so democratized now where there's not just, you know, five papers in a town, there's now 50 billion users pumping out whatever sort of bullshit they want. Um, the onus really has to come down more on the watcher and the person listening and and the education, uh, the, evalu the ability to evaluate uh, of the end user more than anything else. You know, we get a lot of talk about how social media needs to get regulated. I think some of the crazy shit needs to get regulated. Um, but, but certainly, um, for the most part, it's really up to the end user that to self actualize and, and look at things objectively. Um, I always found it really interesting. Now I'm not bashing politics here, but just, just think about what this means during the 2016, uh, presidential election there were these websites that had figured out how to make like 20, 30 grand a month by putting up scurrilous, uh, link bait, um, you know, crazy conspiracy stuff, stuff that people would get a lot of emotion on. Like, like Hillary Clinton said, Jesus was an asshole, you know, you know, something like that. I'm just making stuff up, but they found, uh, the first they targeted Demi uh, Democrats, uh, and they found the Democrats wouldn't, wouldn't buy it. Democrats would do their due diligence. They would check it with Snopes. They would uh, check it with two or three different places. Uh, and that kind of turned them off. So they went to the GOP posts and they found that the GOP posts just bought it hook, line and sinker. And they just ate it up. Now I've always been trying to figure out why, and I wish somebody would do some research on why there's that span of difference. Why, uh, the GOP people were buying up those websites and those guys were making like 20 or 30 grand a month off those sites, uh, hooking, hooking and firing up GOP people with bullshit, um, and link bait. And a lot of it was just false stuff. It was just like, you know, like Hillary Clinton had a baby today and everyone's like, ah, she had a baby. Ah, she killed Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever, man. And they'd buy it. Um, some of it may come down to education. I know that there's a difference between college-educated Democrats and uh, a large part of them, and then there's uh, a lot of uneducated non-college goers in, in the GOP uh, voting base. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just really curious why there's that difference of state of mind of being objective about the data that you're being fed. Um, I I don't know why. I mean, I have some theories. Um, but it kind of delves into politics and religion. Um, I know that if you can believe in, you know, fairies and angels and space monsters and crap and puppet masters that control your life, once you can start believing in those sort of invisible creatures, um, then it becomes easier to believe in just about any other bullshit someone wants to sell you. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I'd really be interested to see a thing. So it's interesting how instead of like governments falling now uh, from social media exposure, we're finding that uh, governments can be overrun with wackos. And certainly I think Putin's sitting in a corner right now just having a laugh and a beer right now because he's like, I don't care if you, you know, America, if you grew up like I did, you read books about how McCarthy and, and, uh, different uh, presidents and leaders have have all tried to spread democracy around the world. 
What's been kind of interesting is the social media aspect of these conspiracy and crazy right wing channels, et cetera, et cetera, have actually made it so that democracy is starting to fall. And we're seeing more and more people go to socialism governments, socialist governments, right wing governments that are oppressive um, and believing that will help them or save them. But um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, and I don't know how to fix it because how do you fix it? I mean, social media people can't like do everything for you. If you have the paper and you read the paper, you've got to decide whether the paper is for real or not. And if we're living in an idiocracy, if you've ever seen the movie, where people are just so fucking dumb they can't make their own fucking decisions and evaluations, well, nothing can really fix that other than ourselves. Um, so anyway, kind of interesting. Let's move on. Uh, sources say Facebook halted acquisition talks with House Party late last year due to antitrust concerns and began internal changes to make itself harder to break up. That's kind of interesting. I imagine they're feeling some pressure from the Justice Department and everything else. I know Trump's leaning on them. Uh, Trump doesn't like social media. In fact, I think there was an article today that they're, that they're suggesting that um, the, the Trump administration, the government actually creates a oversight of the moderators uh like a government oversight like an ftc over the moderators for facebook how scary is fucking that how 1984 is that shit um i i wouldn't mind if there was like a uh a non-political sort of appointee kind of like the uh i don't know the federal reserve where they can't be fired they can't be toyed with um um by the president but I'm really concerned if some whack job really wants to take control of that. So there's that. Uh, Samsung has unveiled the Isocell Bright HMX, a 108 megapixel smartphone camera sensor developed in collaboration with uh, Xiaomi. I believe I'm pronouncing that correct. One of the largest ever at 1.1 or one of 1.33 inches. Wow. 108 megapixel camera sensor for your smartphone. Wow, man. Holy shit. Check this out. It will record 60 uh, K or 6 K video, 60 K that, that'll happen somewhere. I don't know, 50 million years, 6 K video at 30 frames per second. Wow. Holy crap. Holy sign me up for that baby. <laughs> uh, at that point, I'll have ridiculously small pixels. It will gather the light from four pixels, transforming into a 27 pixel sensor. You'll still be able to snap 108 megapixel photos if you want, but they'll likely require brightly lit shooting situations. Wow. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Sign me up for that. I want more pixels. I love more pixels in a camera. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, I see. Huey, wow, where's that yard cut from? That didn't happen. Just ignore that. Uh, the FBI is seeking an early learning tool that scans public data from social media to monitor threats to U.S., which may violate Facebook and Twitter policies. This might be another thing was what we talked about earlier. Maybe we need to have an FBI uh, monitoring or learning tool. The question is, is really would it do anything? I mean, for what, almost a decade now, uh, Edward Snowden brought this out, the the N, the N, um, the National, uh, the NSA, the National Security Administration has been scraping social media and the internet for all of our stuff. They still have not come up with a way to... Um, grab stuff when it's alerted you know most of the stuff is really quick too i think um the last couple shooters posted their um their screeds online like an hour before they started shooting i, I don't know how you're going to stop that um and i suppose the only way it would be i don't know their location thing on their phone or something like that uh their location whereabouts on their phone where you ping them uh but even then i don't you know Unless they state, you wouldn't know what target they're going after. So um, you don't know, even if you knew their location, um, I suppose you could somehow triangulate with like what's an event going on around the thing. But if someone's going to shoot up in a Walmart, uh, I mean, that's it's Walmart. Like everyone's there all the time. If festival, yeah, maybe you could like be like, hey, there's a festival. 
I mean, is this the way we're going to live in now where, um, you know, we get an alert and we have to shut down all the schools, all the stores go on lockdown, like the whole fucking world goes on lockdown every time when he's whack jobs, decides he wants to put a gun. How much work do we have to go into it before we just like make gun licensing stronger, uh, gun licensing harder to get, um, more background checks on guns I mean, how much, how many people have to fucking die and how many different hoops do we have to make ourselves jump through just to enact some simple fucking laws that you have in uh, cars and stuff. So that's how I feel about that. It's just, it's getting stupid. I think Hannity was talking about how he wanted to have schools surrounded with armed guards and shit. Well, he paid for that. He's supposed to be worth a lot of money in real estate. Um, it's just it's just astounding how far we will bend over backwards and break our own backs and die rather than fix this problem. It's just it's astounding to me. So um, there you go. Um, this is kind of interesting. I'm interested in checking this out. Wheels Up, a subscription-based private aviation company that wants to be the Airbnb of private aviation, has raised a 128 million Series D at a valuation of 1.1 billion dollars. I'm going to check them out. There's a company that I like that I uh, was interested in using, JetSuiteX.com. Uh, they only serve like uh, the West Coast, basically California, Vegas, and uh, San Francisco, San Jose. Uh, but they fly you on little Lear jets and you don't have to go through all the bullshit of the TSA. They do check your bags, but they don't, they don't, um, like, you know, have to deal with all the whole TSA lines and bullshit. You can literally pull up to the gate with your car. You don't have to park five miles away. You can walk right up to your plane, get on, you know, your fucking bags are with you. You know, they're not going to end up in fucking Albuquerque or some shit like, I know you're traveling to Texas, but your bags right now are in fucking Australia. <laughs> uh, what the fuck, dude? It's 2019. Seriously, you guys can't get this right? Oh, and by the way, our mechanic broke your guitar. <laughs> so anyway, I've been uh, liking them. I've never flown them yet, Jet Sweet X, because I moved up to Utah for this book. Um... But uh, wheels up might be interesting. I'm, I would like to see the more the democratization of flight travel because I'm so sick of just having, what is it, like five or ten carriers that fucking monopolize the business and just treat you like fucking cattle. I hate that shit. I just so fucking hate flight travel with the, with the whole cattle experience. So anyway, this might be kind of interesting. So fun is fun. Anyway, um... What else did I see today that stuck out at me on Product Hunt? There's kind of some interesting apps that have been put up. Um, let's see. Networking Email Handbook. That kind of looks interesting. Arcane Docs. Blockchain-based alternative to Google Docs. All right. Does everything really have to be blockchain? Can we just have, like, some things that aren't blockchain? Jesus Christ, I went to fucking McDonald's the other day, and they told me, they asked me if I wanted the blockchain scrambled eggs or the non-blockchain scrambled eggs. Do we have to fucking blockchain everything, people? We don't. It's like, seriously. <coughs> I went to bed with my girlfriend last night. She said, do you want to do a blockchain style or do you want to do it, you know, the other style? I'm like, I don't know, is that in the Vietnamese swing fuck chair? I don't know. Um, she's like, no, it's the blockchain style. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Um, so anyway, uh, do we have to blockchain everything? Um, seriously. But I did blockchain a podcast, the Chris Voss, what is it called? Crypto Life podcast. That's blockchain. So there you go. <laughs> Have fun with that. Uh, I don't see really anything that really uh, boners me up too hard on. Uh, um, uh, there's copper CRM. Eh, whatever. I don't, I don't really see that. As very, I, don't really, I don't really care. Uh, I really don't see anything else on um, product hunt that's making my nipples hard. So that's how I feel about that on product hunt today. But uh, maybe you want to check out Arcane Docs because God knows you need blockchain-based alternative to Google Docs. I don't know what blockchain does. Seriously, man, stop it all the time. Um, I'm going to blockchain my dog. What? Stop it. Knock it off. Leave us alone. 
Uh, anyway, guys, so uh, thanks for tuning in the Chris Foss Show podcast. Uh, sorry I've been kind of uh, running off at the mouth, but maybe you learned something or maybe you were slightly entertained. If you were, please go and review the show. We'd certainly appreciate that. Give it high marks if you feel we deserve it. Um, otherwise, you know, lie. No, I'm just kidding. Don't lie. Be honest. Uh, we want the show. If you want to be on the show, reach out to me on the Chris Voss channels anywhere across social media. And also, uh, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to us on YouTube.com forward slash Chris Voss. Certainly appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you next time.